Welcome friends once again to our NPTEL MOOC module on health economics. So before we going to start uh, this particular lecture, um, we need to recap what really happened in uh, our earlier episodes. Uh, we discussed about uh, you know CEA, uh, we discussed uh, their effectiveness, their ratio, okay, cost effective ratio, etc. We started with their introduction then um, and uh, we also you know discuss the theoretical basis of CA and which indeed provide uh, the basis and also the, the basis to compare uh, you know the cost and benefits of different units. So far as uh, the cost effective ratio is concerned uh, uh, we it is important basically you know because neither the cost nor the effects can be held constant. In that case, we, we also talked about this role of ratio, cost effective ratio and um, there are two uh, important limitations we emphasize that has actually led to uh, the limitations related to CEA that has led to the um, introduction of CEUA, uh, the utility analysis. Uh, they are basically um, like you know it is difficult to choose the best measure of effect and it cannot compare interventions for two different health issues uh, at a go. Okay, that is why the CUA analysis is required. Now here we will emphasize CUA that is cost utility analysis and how to carry out this uh, CA. CUA is again CA we will emphasize. So, as a definition of uh, cost utility analysis, it is a specific type of CEA. Uh, this form of comparative economic analysis evaluates two or more policy alternatives in terms of their relative cost and uh, you know generic outcomes as mentioned in Turner's et al paper. Uh, the outcomes are measured uh, as the generic one, generic measure of health status that considers both the effects such as you know mortality and morbidity but just not by their number rather through certain index values. It used to be measured as quality, quality adjusted life years and daily, daily adjusted life years etc. The objective of this uh, measurement is to maximize societal health status. How come it is different than the you know effective analysis, cost effective analysis? CA relates to the output of a particular type of healthcare, whereas the utility analysis refers to the output of healthcare as a whole. And uh, under this CUA, the effectiveness of different healthcare interventions can be directly compared to each other, unlike in CA. So, how to carry out this, uh, we will just discuss. CUA uh, or even even CEA do not give a direct comparison between values of effects or, or cost uh, carrying out policy recommendations using CUA or CEA uh, is far more complex than the, uh, the, the CBA measurement which we did it earlier. We, um, there are three approaches have been you know developed for carrying out this CUA you know approaches of evaluation. First one is ICER that is increase cost effectiveness ratio. Then the second one is uh, net benefit approach that is called NBA and third one is called probabilistic approach. We will also discuss how far uh, uh, these three are important. Usually the probabilistic approach is, it is uh, you know, difficult to estimate the probability value of it. We will discuss this at the end. Let us stick to ICR. Okay. This is indeed called the incremental cost per unit of output or effect or, or per unit change in uh, the output or effect. This is the most popular you know, measure of an uh, activity is cost effectiveness. This comes with the implementation that lower the uh, cost you know, um, effective uh, ratio, uh, lower the CR. The, the, the better it is. Okay. So, we will emphasize now uh, with uh, further clarity. Um, given two alternatives that is A and B or the cost of both uh, would be of course you know C, C and C B and its effects will be E and 
E B. Hence, the I C R is calculated as the delta you know C by delta E. Uh, so we are actually trying to find out the change in cost with respect to the change in you know the effect. Um, so it is delta C by delta E. So C A minus C B. Uh, this is what is mentioned as the Z delta and this. So incremental cost and effects are actually measured. Uh, a visual representation of decision rules that are applied to ICR is presented by the cost effectiveness plane uh, initially by Black 1990. So, we will be emphasizing this plane and it is going to be very interesting for all of you. Uh, start with this uh, two dimensional space or simply a plane uh, where we are presenting the alternative options in terms of cost, in terms of uh, the you know uh, effect. Uh, that is presented here as intervention, whether we should go for uh, the cost cutting model or whether we go for effective new intervention model or not, let us let us understand. So, we are just um, pointing here as in the vertical uh, line uh, that is north to south, we are actually measuring the cost and east to west we are actually measuring the you know effects. Uh, along east west line zero additional cost since you know it is only measuring the the effectiveness so cost is, is zero or in case of the vertical uh, distance that is n to s north to south um, line uh, the if you know new intervention is considered to be zero or no additional effects so these uh, lines divide into four quadrants at this moment uh, which um, show all possible cases northwest area you can just see north and west Okay, it is clearly mentioned north is here, I am just I am not making any rough work, it is clearly visible and uh, this shows uh, I mean here I mean northeast north west area we have just shown it and then uh, this is uh, south east area and uh, difference between these two northwest you can see new intervention cost is more but is less effective because you know it is it is mentioned as negative. Okay. Uh, basically existing intervention dominates in this case. In this uh, southeast area just the contrast is offshore, uh, we are actually effective enough to add uh, the, if, uh, the effects, the intervention has huge effect that is why it is called new intervention dominates in this case. Uh, these are considered to be idealistic and uh, we will be emphasizing the one where uh, we will be relating to the reality. So, now we are referring to northeast uh, area, north and east. This shows new intervention is more effective uh, because we are towards the intervention you know, axis and also it, uh, they are more uh, they are costly. And but the southwest area where um, a new intervention is less costly and less effective. So, this is actually um, you know any intervention you have taken is is considered to be less uh, you know uh, costly because we are on a negative side and uh, less effective as well. Okay. So, here uh, in, in, in these two options we, uh, we are having you know a strong trade off, okay. uh, a strong trade off how to have the better choice like you know uh, in this case since you know cost is uh, increasing in the northeast region. Another case is uh, cost is I mean new intervention is less costly, uh, but it is considered to be less effective. We will also try to find out the best option out of these two. So, the intervention uh, should be taken or not taken, uh, we have some possibilities. But in the you know, red one and the green one which we have highlighted for the northwest and the southern southeast in a region. We need not discuss you know the intervention role of intervention because they are the extreme cases. Okay. So, now uh, but why do we need to use the you know CR plane if we can decide on alternatives based on ICR alone. So, uh, although it seems uh, tempting to you know conclude that if two interventions have different ICRs, one with the lowest CR is most cost effective and should be chosen. This is uh, where things turn complex 
strictly ICR uh, can only be used if alternatives can be scaled off or down to achieve the same cost or effects without affecting the uh, CER. In terms of production you know, relationship, it requires the presence of constant returns to scale and no you know, indivisibilities. If that is not the case, one has to look, uh, look up the cost effective ratio that is CER plan for arriving at decision. Further, although uh, the cost utility analysis or the CA is very useful uh, or over the CA is very useful, it has a strong uh, limitation of uh, not providing uh, absolute recommendations in terms of value like CPA dodge. Instead, it provides a more contingent uh, on, on uh, comparison with alternatives. Economists uh, have sort the means to overcome such a uh, strong limitation um, that is you know, recommending the use of cost effectiveness threshold or selling ratio and also called a standard cost effectiveness threshold which is an explicit cost per unit of outcome uh, such as uh, suppose it is of 200 rupees per uh, quality adjusted life years gain uh, that is you know that any intervention must meet to be considered as cost effective. Such threshold can be determined by a variety of methods refer to uh, the references. Now, um, we will clarify what are the uh, you know exact intervention and out of these options cost effective threshold which one is actually you know more effective. Uh, we have to take certain decisions on it. The decision rules are straightforward like two areas we have highlighted. Northwest, uh, Northwest, and uh, Southeast do not require trade-off because it is very clearly uh, understood, and the uh, possible there is no question of uh, trade-off required. The decision of the other two quadrants, that is, you know, the Northeast uh, and the South West, they, it requires some trade-off. We'll clarify to what extent this trade-off is possible. Uh, in this case. Any interventions to be effective requires uh, to be below the uh, you know, uh, cost effective uh, threshold. We will just see what is this threshold for the first case that is northeast in area. We have already mentioned that this requires intervention and is also costly, but approach would be to understand to what extent it is possible. So, if uh, CE threshold cost effective threshold is greater than that of uh, the intervention is greater that means the change the you know, delta c by delta e intervention is actually you know cost effective so you can just see if the if it is toward this uh, you can see uh, so it is actually uh, you know cost effective all right so if the change in um, uh, cost with respect to this uh, and where C threshold is high becoming higher than that of the change in cost, okay. then uh, intervention is cost effective otherwise no. In the second case that is uh, uh, in the case of south western area, uh, it is practically uh, questionable though. Uh, so, we have just hi highlighted uh, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So, we have just mentioned that uh, you know acceptable threshold where the intervention is effective and uh, and the other part we have just highlighted that that is non-acceptable the ok. So, above the threshold once this is exceeding the threshold that is non-acceptable. Uh, non so, this issue is often referred to as um, you know um, concern of uh, acceptability uh, this diagram where we have clearly identified what is the you know the clear cut decision out of four uh, quadrants then we again divided within the you know uh, conflicting region that is the the north uh, eastern region and uh, the so south western region we try to again derive through the cost effective threshold level it is common in economic evaluations to compare more than two uh, mutual alternatives. In such situations, the calculation of ICR becomes 
a bit complex and uh, some works by Helene et al 2010 gave the correct picture for comparing alternative healthcare interventions. Okay. So, there are some options given as rank options by increasing cost, eliminate you know simple dominance option or ex eliminate extended dominance options and calculate incremental cost effective uh, you know level and uh, also calculate ICR for remaining options. We will understand each of them step by step with appropriate example. Here we have uh, a situation uh, where three uh, treatments for managing a disease called migraine and their uh, cost is given. So, cases A, B and C are given the baseline treatment uh, is the current standard practice for migraine management. Uh, other are treatment A, treatment B and treatment C. Starting standard practice is given as uh, 80 and that requires 4 days to reduce the you know, migraine whereas treatment A even if it is cost uh, more costly, the effectiveness is also less, it is consuming more uh, days similarly others will find out. We will just see the objective here is to understand the cost effectiveness of these treatments and identify the most effective options. Starting with the rank options, we can easily rank. Initially, our example is here A, B and C. Now, you can see uh, the, there has been a flip of this because C is, uh, is, is more effective than that of treatment B. Okay. So, uh, you can just see C requires 120 uh, cost for uh, meeting the um, treatment for migraines and even it is effective in terms of days that is 6 days required. So, we have changed it. This is called rank option. Second one is called eliminate the simple dominance options. Here uh, elimination of simple dominance refers to elimination of option for of which another option is cheaper or more effective. So, based on this definition we will uh, exclude of course, the treatment B because it is more costly than uh, A and also less effective taking more time even uh, for this. So, B is actually extruded alright that is why we have highlighted here. Now, we are actually emphasizing the eliminate uh, extended um, you know dominance option let me just see ok. So, in this case uh, we check if a combination of two other options is cheaper or more effective than the option under consideration. So, we will see how uh, in this uh, case which I have already cited we only have three uh, remaining options. So, two uh, will be combined and uh, the like you know, in this case look at the baseline and the treatment that is A and C. Hence, no further elimination uh, through extended dominance is needed and we can directly move to the next step. So, uh, in that case so that is our next step is for calculating incremental cost and effect one. So, we have already uh, shown it says formula. However, we will just see calculate ICR for each remaining treatment compared to the next lower ranked options. So, in that case uh, cost of treatment minus the cost of baseline which we have already shown as 80 and effect of the baseline. So, we will see both the cases in here we are actually referring to C edge against C edge against E. So, that is effect. So, here first, first one is in ICR case it is cost and second one is effect. So, accordingly uh, it is presented. So, you know to calculate this uh, we have taken uh, you know C A uh, minus baseline and, and its cost divided by effect of uh, A minus baseline um, you know uh, effect. We have seen that uh, the baseline cost was 80 and uh, the baseline uh, effect was 4 days. Hence, we can calculate for against C, uh, you can easily see what really happens. So, I mean at this moment we are actually referring to ICR A, okay. we can also compare with other B option, C option as well, but B we have already uh, you know, sidelined, so better to compare with C, is not it. So, in this case we have calculated that it is actually 22 and in the another case that is C as I just said, so we just derive this is actually 20. So, now surprising to see that you know C is even more effective than that of than that of the case of A. 
so far as ICR is concerned. Now exclude uh, treatment A because its ICR is higher than the treatment C although uh, based on only cost it was ranked lower. So you can just see this is this is where the details and we have picked up and actually derived the results. The last one is actually uh, calculate ICR for the remaining options since there are no more options left in our case we do not need further ICR calculation. Hence, in this case, uh, we need to conclude that based on the cost effective criteria, treatment C is considered to be you know, most cost effective among, among all other interventions. So, however, there are limitations of uh, the cost effective ratios that is uh, in case assumption of linearity that is ICR assumes linearity uh, that means it, it assumes the relationship between cost and effect is constant. In reality that assumption does not hold. Another one is called threshold dependency. Uh, the choice of this threshold uh, can be you know arbitrary and may vary across different context or decision makers. So, and the third aspect is called uh, the limitation is ICR uh, related to uh, generalizability that is ICR values may not be directly comparable across different interventions. DJs or healthcare systems. And next one is called time horizon challenges, different time perspective can lead to different conclusion about cost effectiveness. With all the problems attached to CR, there have been uh, challenges to their dominance. The most prominent is the net benefit approach and which is suggested by Stinnett and uh, Mullen 1998 paper. Hence, net benefit uh, approach as mentioned as NBA essentially restores the original concept of uh, cost benefit analysis without imposing welfare risk framework. One can say that uh, it was developed but not uh, because of the theoretical problems of ICR but because of the you know undesirable um, mathematical and statistical properties only. The aim of this is to obtain a single number that is not in ratio like in uh, ICR. So, as you have just said uh, you know the like you know delta C by delta in case of ICR measured in monetary terms and delta in non-monetary terms converted to monetary terms using a threshold values. However, in uh, net benefit approach uh, an activity is defined as net benefit that is basically equal to delta you know E minus delta C uh, E stands for the effect where delta C and delta are measured in the same unit in this case. So, to convert uh, there are conversion uh, approaches to convert cost and uh, effects in the same units in NBA. The NBA relies on ceiling ratio that is uh, uh, a ratio or threshold we have already mentioned that is called RC and this is uh, an implicit value attached to the cost or effect. The ceiling ratio helps to co you know, convert cost uh, to the same unit as uh, effects you know uh, or vice versa. Uh, if uh, effects are converted it results in monetary net benefit that is also called MNB. This is present as MNB that is we have you know, multiplied with that the RC level that is called the ceiling ratio of the of the case which you all recited. If cost are converted uh, it results in you know health net benefit if you know um, when monetary benefit is actually converted we multiply the RC times its effect uh, the change in this effect if the cost are converted then that will be you know as a ratio or, or divided with the cost. So, hence it is presented here, but in the other case it is presented or multiplied as RC. So, how do we decide then what is uh, cost effective and what is not? Uh, so, are there any set of decision uh, rules applied here? Uh, we are just referring to uh, first of all for MNB if uh, the benefit is actually you know. Uh, multiply it with its uh, ceiling uh, you know, ratio, uh, ceiling level. That too, if um, the MNB difference is positive with respect to its cost, if the difference is positive, then of course it is you know more cost effective. And if uh, it is negative, 
then it is not cost effective. Uh, then in case of HNV, similarly uh, just there is reverse we did it you know we divided the RC with respect to the change in cost. If the difference is positive then that is cost effective otherwise it is not cost effective. However, deciding which RC should be used is really problematic if an organization sets a specific values for this uh, there is no problem and can be derived. If you do not have any value it is necessary to report uh, you know, net benefit for each RC level. Okay. So, we are just actually um, explaining the or illustrating the you know, NBA uh, for M MNB which just we clarified. Um, this is considered to be you know the relationship is considered linear as value of money remains constant over time. Whereas, uh, for the HNB concept for health specific not monetary one in that case over the time and the value of health diminishes and this is non-linear. Okay. And with a benchmark level we are assuming here with you know, as 10,000 rupees as RC based on that calculation is made. The activity would be cost effective if RC is above 10,000. Okay. If uh, it is above 10,000 for unit of effectiveness then it is really effective. So, uh, for MNB uh, suppose three healthcare intervention that is ABC aim to reduce hospital uh, readmissions the cost of intervention A is 80,000 and it leads to a reduction of 10 readmissions. Intervention B on the other hand cost that 1 lakh and reduces 15 readmissions. Whereas, in case of C the cost is of uh, 1 lakh 20,000 and results in reduction in 20 readmissions. The hospital feels the ceiling ratio uh, should be of 5,000 for uh, you know reduce the admission rupees 5000 in that case if the ceiling ratio is hospital calculation is suggested. In that case you can calculate the MNB that is uh, monetary you know, you know net uh, benefit. So, in that case RC times delta E minus delta C. So, we can just calculate and, uh, and, and find out since RC we have already mentioned as 5000 for reduce admissions uh, or readmissions. And hence the delta uh, EB the case uh, is a change in its effect will be 5 um, okay? because we have taken um, as uh, difference between uh, the effect is 15 minus 10 that is 5 difference in readmission between B and N A and uh, delta uh, C will be of course 20,000 the difference in, in terms of cost and cost between B and so you can see uh, the effect we are calculating uh, this is for the B case ok. Uh, cost of B case B over A we are considering A is the benchmark one uh, the standard one. So, similarly for the C case you can see ok that means C and A and uh, here C and A for case C and accordingly we have derived all the important you know values and we can put it and find out. Uh, it said all the values MNB for B for MNB for the C case as against A, B case against A. So, C is actually you know 10,000 whereas in the case of B against A is 5,000. So, now as per the decision rule um, as we already said that if it is greater than 0 the difference is greater than 0 that means the activity is cost effective. So, compared to intervention A both intervention B and C are cost effective. However, uh, C is better as it has higher net benefit. Another case for health net benefit ok not monetary uh, benefit where we discuss about its non-linearity assumption consider a public health initiative to increase vaccination coverage in a community the standard vaccination program cost around uh, 150000 you know, pound and leads to an increase in vaccination coverage by 20% a proposed enhanced program costing around 180000 pound is expected to increase the coverage by 30% while the government fixes the ceiling ratio would be just 5000 uh, maybe in terms of again 
uh, we can uh, take with the same de denomination uh, you can take with uh, either rupees if you take or you can take with pound ok. So, uh, per percentage uh, point increase in coverage you can just cross check with the previous one if uh, yes it is correct. So, you can just change then this example the same denomination. Hence, we need to calculate H and B uh, no, that is uh, delta A minus uh, delta C by R C. We have already divided this um, the benchmark level or the ceiling ratio. Um, so, given this uh, we have derived all those figures for your reference. We just see 5000 we have derived and finally, we found that the change is positive. So, that means the new option that is B option is actually cost effective. So, compared to intervention A, intervention B is cost effective and hence it should be adapted. Both the examples are uh, hypothetical and they illustrate how to apply the, this approach that is the monetary uh, benefit approach or the health benefit uh, approach to determine the cost effectiveness in different contexts uh, using this concept which we already say MNB or HNB. Last one to explain is called probabilistic approach and um, uh, this is uh, developed in response to some difficulties attached with ICR. Even the probability approach that is used as a replacement of ICR is also known as uh, uh, cost effective you know acceptability curve ok. The CEAC mentioned by Hort et al. Hort et al. in 1994. Um, here CER is uh, no longer regarded as the number that is observed with certainty, but as a variable whose mean is observed. This means it can take different values depending upon a sample of the observations on which it is based. This leads to the idea uh, with a given uh, uh, you know ceiling level uh, that is RC we can only state a probability that an activity is cost effective. The probability here will be dif different for you know, different levels of RC. Some graphical presentation is presented here uh, which I already said it is you know uh, an increasing function uh, but in a decreasing rate ok. So, since probabilities are attached, uh, so probabilities at maximum will be this at 1, so 0 till 1 is, is presented. Uh, the CAC which uh, has the merit of allowing uncertainty to be expressed while retaining the familiar concept of the CER. There are disadvantages as well uh, although CAC is an interesting concept it is difficult to know how decision makers are supposed to use it and uh, as yet there is no guide to how to read new CAC even not enough experience uh, is present in the literature to use it. Okay, so, uh, that is all I think we have already explained everything. However, uh, these are the summary and conclusion. Uh, we discuss about cost utility analysis uh, uh, in the form of cost effectiveness analysis. We carry out uh, in this lecture on CUA as part of CEA. However, CUA is an extension of CEA. There are, there are basically three you know popular methods we discuss CER, NBN, CESC. CAC is part of the probabilistic approach. ICS can be you know uh, presented graphically on a cost uh, effective plane. ICR incremental cost effective ratio uh, can be converted into same units using ceiling ratio and the methods are uh, called MNB or HNB and CAC accounts for statistical uncertainty in the CR and uncertainty in the ceiling ratio by using probability that an activity is cost effective at different levels of ceiling ratio. So, that is all I think uh, in the next lecture uh, we will discuss uh, the monetary and non-monetary you know valuation of healthcare and uh, here are the readings I think uh, you have already cited in some of the you know, uh, slides it will be useful for you. With this I will stop here, thank you.